Ugh, okay, I'm straight up out of ideas on how to write intros for these Steven Universe videos. You know I love the show, you know it's my favorite, you know I talk about it constantly, and you know I've recapped the entire plot of all six seasons plus the movie in two big recap videos. But what if two videos became one videos? Yeah, that's all I got. Basically, I felt weird about my two Steven Universe recaps being split up into separate videos, so now they're fused together into one ultimate Steven Universe recap video. I don't know. Don't worry, I'll be back soon with an actual new video that you guys have been asking for. I just need a little bit more time to work on it. But for now, here is the actual complete entirety of Steven Universe. Oh boy. Okay, so to start, Steven Universe is a Cartoon Network show about a kid named Steven who's a member of this group called the Crystal Gems. Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl! <laughs> Garnet's chill, Amethyst's kinda punky, and Pearl looks like a bird. The gems are a race of, like, alien beings that are basically just rocks with brains that project physical forms. So, like, their bodies aren't real, but they are. Like, they can still get hurt and stuff. I don't know, but basically, Steven's a gem too. Mostly. He's the child of Rose Quartz, the former leader of the Crystal Gems, and Greg Universe, just some dude. So he's part gem and part human. Rose actually had to give up her physical form in order for Steven to exist, so she's pretty much dead, and Steven's got her gem. The gems all live in a town called Beach City and go on adventures fighting monsters and stuff. But Steven's gotta stay home because he doesn't know how to work his gem powers yet. Most early episodes center around explaining different aspects of the gem race and showing Steven learn how to use his gem powers. Steven eventually gets to go on missions, he learns he can shapeshift, he gets a magic pink lion, he meets a girl named Connie, he finds out he has healing powers, he learns that gems can fuse together, he finds this magic mirror that turns out to be another gem called Lapis Lazuli, that one's important, and he almost freaking dies of old age in a shockingly real scene that disturbed the heck out of me the first time I saw it. Oh, and he can summon his mom's shield. That's important, I guess. But even with all that, the real main plot of this season involves the gems warping around the earth and fighting these monsters that are actually other gems that have been corrupted. So now they're scary monsters. But even scary monsters have feelings. But how did all these gems get on Earth in the first place? Well, remember how I said gems are aliens? They come from this planet called Homeworld, which is run by four ultra-powerful gems called diamonds, yellow, blue, white, and pink. They're mostly just taller than everyone else. And they invaded Earth, tried to destroy all of its organic life, and turned the whole planet into a place to grow more gems. But the crystal gems rebelled against Homeworld, a freaking war broke out, and a ton of gems were shattered. Or, you know, Killed. But the crystal gems somehow managed to save the earth from being colonized, so things were mostly chill. But then, thousands of years later, some suspicious stuff starts going down. Steven discovers that a new gem with these robot limbs named Peridot is checking up on the planet and repairing various warp stations that lead back to Homeworld. This is a pretty obvious problem for a bunch of war criminals hiding out on Earth. So the gems destroy the warp pad, obviously. But that only causes more problems as Peridot brings a whole freaking ship to Earth with Lapis, that mirror gem, and this big freaking scary gem, Jasper. Uh, Jasper thinks Steven is Rose Quartz, so she kidnaps everyone and starts flying them back to Homeworld. And this is where we find out the first big twist of the series, Ruby and Sapphire. On Jasper's ship, Steven finds two more imprisoned gems, Ruby and Sapphire, who are actually Garnet! Yes, this entire time, Garnet's been a fusion. Ruby and Sapphire reunite to form Garnet. Jasper gets all, ugh, fusions for poo-poo butt gems who are weak. But then Garnet's just like, I'm gonna rap now. She kicks Jasper's butt, the ship crash lands back on Earth, and it all culminates with one last face-off on the beach. In a moment of desperation, Jasper fuses with Lapis, forming a new gem called Malachite. But Lapis manages to control the fusion enough to retreat into the ocean and stop anyone from being hurt. And yeah, it's pretty intense. How'd this season start again? Uh, I just turned all my fingers into cats! So, yeah, things got real by the end of season one. And with Jasper out of the picture for now, season two is mostly about finding Peridot and dealing with these creepy new gem monsters made out of fused pieces of shattered gems. They're like reanimated mutant zombie Frankenstein monsters, and it's 
Yeah, it's kind of disturbing, actually. Meanwhile, Pearl is teaching Steven's friend Connie to sword fight. Yay! Which comes in handy when the mutated gem experiments start showing up in town. Oh no! That could cause such an imminent threat to all the innocent people. I'm sure they're going to warn all the citizens and- <gasps> Peridot! Oh my gosh, get her! Kill it! Yeah, next episode, Perry's back. And the whole gem mutants reaching Beach City thing is just kind of abandoned. I'm sure they'll be fine. The gems finally manage to capture Peridot, and she tells them about this thing called the Cluster, which is an enormous bioweapon built out of a ton of those gem fusion experiments that have been buried in the Earth's crust. It's been building and building over thousands of years, and once it takes form, it would totally destroy the planet. Wow. That's a pretty huge threat. They should probably warn everyone and maybe bring in the military. Or they decide to build a drill to dig to the center of the earth completely on their own using spare parts they found in a barn. Yep, <sighs> great, sure, makes total sense, whatever. And the rest of the season is just the five of them working on this drill as Peridot learns more about the earth and eventually becomes a crystal gem herself. Redemption, woo! Honestly though, when I first started watching Steven Universe, the whole Peridot becomes a crystal gem arc was basically what made me officially fall in love with the series. It's just too wholesome. But anyway, now on to season three and everything is going wrong. Malachite's back and the cluster is forming both at the same time. So the gang has to split up with Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl fighting Malachite, leaving Steven and Peridot to deal with the cluster completely on their own. Malachite gets her butt whipped and the gem save Lapis from Jasper, which is good. But surprise, surprise, the drill sucks at destroying the cluster and Steven and Perry might die, which is bad. But then Steven somehow manages to communicate with the cluster. The cluster just wants to form, but Steven's like, but you have each other. And that works. Apparently. Steven, with the help of all the gem shards in the cluster, manages to place the whole thing in a stasis bubble. So like, it's dormant again, but it's still there. Eh, good enough for me. And after that action-packed premiere, the rest of the season just kind of kicks around for a while. The main thing going on is the hunt for Jasper. But in the meantime, Steven finds another new gem, a former member of the Crystal Gems named Bismuth. She gets along with everyone really well, but has to be poofed again because she wanted to create this intense weapon to shatter gems. Basically, she wanted to go on a killing spree, so... Bye bye, Bismuth. Right after that, <gasps> Jasper's back, get her, kill it. Steven, Peridot, and Amethyst find Jasper building an army of corrupted gems. Amethyst tries to fight her off on her own, but gets her butt kicked. So Steven tries to help her out and they accidentally end up fusing together. This is the first time Steven fuses with any of the main crystal gems and it is so hype, but uh, things get mega heavy again right after as Jasper attempts to fuse with a corrupted gem, gets corrupted herself, and lets on about something horrible Rose did to Pink Diamond before going full monster and getting poofed by Peridot. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that was a lot. And what was Jasper saying about Pink Diamond? Well, one thing I haven't mentioned is that a Pink Diamond is dead, shattered by Rose Quartz. Yeah, so Steven's mom is a shatterer, and that's a pretty intense thing for a kid to go through. So naturally, in a show like Steven Universe that's all about being connected with your feelings, it's time for a wacky Roadrunner parody with Peridot. Yeah, we're entering season four now, and Steven Universe kinda has this habit of doing a lot of filler episodes right after things get interesting. So we just kind of do that for a while until eventually we meet two new mysterious gems, Topaz and Aquamarine, who were sent by the diamonds to kidnap Steven's friends. Steven manages to save them by giving himself over, claiming to be Rose Quartz, and the spaceship sets off for Homeworld. So now it's just Topaz, Aquamarine, Steven, and Lars. Ugh. Right, haven't mentioned him yet. So this is Lars. He's a human who works at a donut shop in Beach City and for the majority of the show, he is the worst. He's always a jerk, he learns no lessons and he is frustrating beyond belief to watch. He's the worst and I hate him, except 
you're, well, we'll get to that. Steven and Lars are taken to Homeworld, and Steven is put on trial for the shattering of Pink Diamond. But Steven's lawyer realizes that there are a ton of holes in the story. Like, how could anyone get that close to a diamond and no one notice or try to stop it? It doesn't make sense. Yellow gets totally fed up with all of this and starts raging, giving Steven and Lars time to escape. They crash land in a dark corner of Homeworld and meet a group of unusual gems called the Off Colors. They're all different in some way, so they hide or else they'll be destroyed by these scanner droids that explode any gem they find. But Lars doesn't have a gem, so he's basically invisible. And once an attack starts, Lars decides to finally stand up and fight, saving everyone. But then, Lars dies. But then he doesn't. Steven starts crying, and his tears bring Lars back to life. Remember I said he has healing powers? And now Lars is all pink, and his hair works like a portal that connects to Steven's lion, who also has portal hair. Don't question it, we're almost done. So Lars is back after being dead for five seconds, and now he's a good person. It took four seasons and the end of his life to do it, but Lars doesn't suck anymore. He and the Off Colors escape Homeworld and start traveling space Star Trek style while Steven escapes back to Beach City through Lars's hair. It's more normal than it sounds, I promise. Fast forward a bit and Steven has a strange dream about Pink Diamond where he sees Pearl sneak up behind her and draw a sword. And uh, Steven's dreams are usually astral projections, so... That's concerning. He confronts Pearl about what he saw, and we get the biggest reveal of the entire series. Rose Quartz, Steven's mom, was Pink Diamond. Okay. What? 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 So Pink was actually the one who wanted to rebel against the diamonds, save Earth, and start a new life. So she created a new identity and killed off Pink by having Pearl take Rose's form and pretend to shatter her. And because Pink was Rose and Rose's gem is now in Steven, that means Steven is Pink Diamond. Again, what? And with that news finally out in the open, everything starts happening at once. The diamonds come to Earth to attack, the cluster comes back out of nowhere and forms a giant arm like the diamond ships, but is apparently fighting on the crystal gem side. That's pretty weird. Oh, and Bismuth is back. You know, the gem that wanted to shatter a bunch of people and even tried to shatter Steven. Yeah, everyone's just cool with her now. Ah, uh, being cool with attempted murderers is tight. Anyway, they all fight the diamonds until Steven, through some weird psychic stuff that's never really explained, is finally able to convince Blue and Yellow Diamond that he really is pink and stop the fighting. So Blue and Yellow aren't threats anymore. Not really, but we're not done yet. Steven wants the diamonds to help him cure all the corrupted gems. But even with the three of them, they just can't do it. They need someone else. White Diamond. And up to this point in the show, we've barely even heard about White, let alone seen her. So the whole crew are now off to Homeworld one last time to talk to White Diamond. To make a long story short, it went poo poo. A lot happens during this arc, but the basics are White attacks everyone and things get <laughs> really cool. Every crystal gem is fighting off White's giant robot and we even get to see a ton of new fusions. But White overpowers them and zaps the diamonds and the gems, putting them under her control. Poo poo. She grabs Steven and forcibly rips out his gem because she thinks it'll release Pink's original form. Instead, it releases this super powerful, otherworldly pink version of Steven, which I guess is supposed to be like Steven's gem half or something. Meanwhile, Steven's gemless human half is left weak and powerless. And White's all like, where's Pink? But Gem Steven's just like, she's. And then the two Stevens walk up to each other, laugh, cry, hug each other a lot, and then they fuse together, it's animated really well, and Steven is back! What even just happened? And in that moment, well on Homeworld they say, that White Diamond's heart grew three sizes that day. Seriously, White starts glowing pink, meaning she's now off color. She's not perfect like she wanted to be, but that's okay. And Steven's like, that's kind of what we've been saying for five seasons. And just like before, White's no longer a threat. The gems and the diamonds all go back to Earth and cure all of the corrupted gems, even Jasper. Oh, and Lars and the off colors make it back to Earth too. All the gems are safe, the diamonds learn the error of their ways, and everyone lived happily ever after. And that 
is the complete story of Steven Universe from beginning to end. This is legit my favorite cartoon ever, and I am so happy that it was given such a proper and satisfying ending. Wait. When we last left Steven and the gang, they had just made peace with Yellow, Blue, and White Diamond after going through the whole complicated rigmarole of Steven also being Rose Quartz, who was also Pink Diamond. They all came back to Earth to heal the corrupted gems, including Jasper, that one's important, and they all lived happily ever after. And I said all that at the end of my last recap. I didn't know that was gonna be the theme of the movie. <laughs> These days, the gems are living out there happily ever after by building a little place in the middle of Beach City for the now healed corrupted gems to live out their lives and learn about all the crap they missed. It's called Little Homeworld, and everyone is doing great. Though the diamonds keep badgering Steven, the closest thing to Pink Diamond they have left, to move in with them on Big Homeworld. Obviously, Steven does not want to do that, but I'm sure that'll sort itself out eventually. But for now, we get to see our favorite main character gems finally able to relax after all these years. No more villains, no more wars, everyone can just chill. Okay. Giant drill full of pink goo just landed on the earth. There's some weird new gem standing on top of it. This is Spinel. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> Calm down. Spinel is a very angry gem who we know nothing about. And Steven's like, hi, I'm Steven. What's your name? Whoa! Whoa! Her giant drill digs into the ground and she immediately starts swinging at Steven and the gems with this crazy scythe thing called a rejuvenator. And Pearl's all like, I cannot believe it is you, Spinel, who for the audience's information was... The gems are all poofed by Spinel's rejuvenator. Steven gets hit with it too, but it just kind of gives him the jibblies for a bit, so he yoinks the scythe away from Spinel and poofs her with it. A reminder, poofing is not killing. Poofing is simply dissipating their physical form for a little while. Shattering is killing, but you know, that's not important right now. Eventually, all the gems start reforming, but they're acting odd. It's like they all reset to their factory defaults or something. Oh, that's why they call it a rejuvenator. All right, that checks out. And before Steven can even hope to make sense of what's going on, Spinel comes back. But she's not the same angry, vengeful, spiky-haired gem we knew before. Now she's all happy, bubbly, and calls Steven her best friend. First she tries to kill him, now she's his best friend. I'd make a joke about that, but that's kind of just how Steven makes friends. And to make matters worse, the rejuvenator might not have poofed Steven, but now his powers aren't working. Man, how could this possibly get any worse? Oh crap, the drill. This giant syringe is injecting some kind of pink toxin into the world that's killing everything. So we're gonna have to deal with that at some point. But first, we gotta get the crystal gems back to normal. Several musical numbers later, Amethyst is back to normal, Ruby and Sapphire formed Garnet, but she doesn't really have her memories back, and Steven got Pearl back to normal by fusing with his dad, because that's apparently just something he can do now. But that also triggered something in Spinel that made her run away. Steven finds her at a warp pad, and they travel to this abandoned space garden. Apparently, this is where Spinel used to live as a playmate for Pink Diamond way back in the day. But once Pink was given her first colony, the Earth, she legit just abandoned Spinel, told her to stand perfectly still and wait for her as part of a game, and then just dipped, confirming my theory that Pink has been the real villain of this entire series. Holy crap, what a terrible person. Spinel waited in that garden for six thousand years, never moving an inch. But after all the diamond drama went down and peace was restored, Steven sent out a message to the universe and Spinel learned the truth. Pink left her, started a new life, made new friends, and then disappeared forever. That's why Spinel randomly attacked the Earth. Revenge. Doesn't really explain where she got the injector though, but... Uh, Steven does what he does best and promises to help her if she helps him save the Earth. But Spinel starts questioning if he really wants to be her friend or if he's just lying to her like Pink so she'll turn off the injector. And when Steven accidentally drops the rejuvenator, Spinel's just like, oh no, nah, -uh, you ain't pulling a fast one on me. I don't know why Spinel sounds like John Mulaney, but all right. She turns on Steven and drills the injector back into the Earth. Oh, uh, Garnet got her memories back, by the way. It leads to a cool musical number, but ultimately in the plot, it just kind of happens. And now we have the final face-off between Steven and Spinel. Steven randomly gets his powers back through an anime-style epiphany like, oh, I just need to believe in my ability to change. And he launches into an epic musical number. But Spinel isn't having any of that and says, just can it, won't ya? You can't just make everything better by singing some stupid song. 
Which has weird implications. So apparently, in universe, Steven is literally singing a completely original song that he's just pulled out of his butt while being mercilessly beaten up by Spinel. That just seems like a weird use of time right now. But I guess it does something because eventually Spinel comes to a realization that Steven really was trying to help her. And she breaks down, wondering why she's even fighting. She starts crying and then I start crying and then everyone's crying and ah! But right as they stop fighting, the injector just goes Steven manages to save himself and Spinel from, you know, exploding and dying, but the town's still in pretty bad shape. Spinel's like, well, I've made a mess. I should probably be on my way out. She feels like she's already screwed up too much to be friends with Steven and wishes she could have a blank slate with someone else. Here come the diamonds! Yeah, blue, yellow, and white all come down to earth at the worst possible time to be closer to Steven. But once they meet Spinel and hear about her story, they're like, yeah, dude, earth sucks, but low key, this pink gem's pretty dope. Is it chill if we like, Take her? Spinel's like, that'd be chill. They all leap for Homeworld and Steven starts licking the dirt. Steven Universe Future. And this is where things start getting pretty crazy. By the way, if you're enjoying this recap so far, you can always head down below this video and click the subscribe button and hit the little notification bell next to it to make sure you don't miss any future recaps like this. I'd really appreciate the support. So what's going on now? Sometime after the events of the movie, the world is back to normal and the gems have created little homeschool to better teach the healed gems about their new life on Earth. Steven's kind of like the principal of the school, but he's clearly clearly struggling. He's loaded down with responsibilities, he's dealing with gems who still hate him, and a bunch of his friends are starting to change or leave Beach City. And all this change and stress is causing some weird things to happen to Steven. Remember at the end of my last recap when White Diamond ripped Steven's gem out of him and it created this pink glowy Steven that was insanely strong and super scary? Well now, anytime Steven gets too worked up, too scared, too stressed, he starts glowing pink and gets all sorts of new powers. This is Steven's diamond half starting to shine through. He discovers this for the first time during a fight with Jasper in episode one and is like, wow, okay. That's weird. Jasper, you know anything about this? But Jasper's just like, get off my property. So over the next like five, six, seven episodes, this kind of crap just keeps happening and no one really does anything about it. But after one particular incident that nearly kills Steven and his friends at a little homeschool graduation, Steven decides the stress is becoming too much for him and he quits his job at little homeschool. But honestly, I think this just made everything worse. See, Steven has spent pretty much his whole life doing two things, helping others and avoiding death. People really like trying to kill this boy, but now no one's really trying to kill him anymore and all the people he was trying to help are better now. So Steven's kind of left feeling like he has no purpose. And when you're feeling lost, you can make very, very stupid decisions. And this is where Connie comes back into the picture. These days, it's kind of implied that Steven and Connie are maybe dating now, but they don't get to see each other a ton because Connie is super busy studying to lo-fi chill hip hop beats. Uh, she's getting ready to enroll in an out of state college and Steven's getting worried that the two of them will start to drift apart. Oh, uh, that reminds me, I kind of forgot to mention in my last recap that Steven and Connie can fuse together to form Stevani. Stevani is definitely one of the most interesting characters in this show, but they don't show up super often, so unfortunately, they got a little lost in the shuffle last time. But as Steven's going through it, he realizes that when he's part of Stevani, he doesn't feel lost, which makes him even more worried about Connie moving away. And here's where the stupid comes in. Steven decides that at the age of 16 and right before Connie's about to start college to propose to her in the hopes of getting married and going to college with her. This goes about as well as you'd expect. Steven is, of course, rejected in honestly a really polite and loving way. Connie doesn't say, no way, freak, and then spit in his face or anything. She gives him a hug and says, it's not a no, it's a not now. And Steven takes it pretty well until he doesn't. And this is where things get pretty serious. Steven starts glowing again, but now he's also starting to swell up uncontrollably. He goes to the hospital and discovers that while he's healed physically from all of his dangerous adventures over the years, he never really healed mentally. Steven's been dealing with near-death experiences since he was a little kid, always in danger, someone always trying to kill him. And that childhood trauma is affecting the way his body handles stress. Every problem in Steven's life feels like the end of the world because 
that's all he's known. In the show's own words, his body is responding to minor threats as if his life were in danger. And with all this change in his life and his fears of being left behind looming over him constantly, his body's response to that stress is becoming more and more extreme. Unfortunately, things for Steven don't get much better after the hospital visit. He's still swelling, he still can't control his diamond powers, and he doesn't know what to do or how to keep his friends out of danger. So he runs away and finds Jasper to ask for help. Jasper convinces Steven that instead of trying to repress his anger and his powers, he should just let them out. So the two begin training, and as Steven learns more and more about his powers, he becomes not himself. Eventually, new buff Steven decides he's ready for a rematch against Jasper. But during their fight, he loses control again. He traps Jasper and attacks her with a giant wall of spikes and... <laughs> Steven shattered her. Jasper's dead. Uh, luckily, he's able to heal Jasper's jam and bring her back, but... Holy crap, I never would have dreamed this show would go there. This is still the cheeseburger backpack show. The show that started with a rap about cat-shaped ice cream sandwiches. And the main character just killed someone! The newly healed Jasper bows to Steven and calls him her diamond, which really freaks Steven out, as if he weren't already freaking out enough. You know from the manslaughter. Steven runs away to Homeworld to talk to the diamonds, but that doesn't really help. Though, for some levity, we do get to see Spinel again, which is nice. She seems to be doing well. She's animated like Sonic now for some reason, which I guess is a sign of growth. I'm glad she's doing better. Can we just focus on her for a bit? Cause Steven's starting to fantasize about shattering White Diamond that I'm very scared. Steven's friends give him an intervention where he breaks down and admits to all the dark thoughts he's had and to shattering Jasper. He calls himself a fraud and a monster and suddenly his body just erupts, growing into an actual giant monster. So that's a thing we have to deal with now, but the gems don't really know what to do. He's too powerful to attack, too strong to restrain for long, and he won't listen to anyone. Lapis holds him back for a while, but he breaks free just in time for, of course, the cluster to come back, because the cluster will always come back, and for the diamonds to show up at the worst possible time, because the diamonds will always show up at the worst possible time. They start crying and blaming themselves as the cluster holds back Steve even, but Connie's just like, yes, this is your fault, but now's not the time for pity parties, you narcissists. Connie realizes that for his entire life, Steven's been helping everyone with their problems and making them better people. But Steven never had that for himself. So in the most Steven universe move ever, instead of fighting the gems, the diamonds, Greg, Connie, Lion, the cluster, they all tackle hug Steven. Even after he confessed to all the awful stuff he's bottled up, his friends and family are still there to show him love and support through everything he's going through. Steven finally stops, breaks into tears, and shrinks back down to his normal self. Whoo! Okay! Oh my god! Cookie Cat! He's a pet for your tummy! Cookie Cat! Woo! Okay! Happy times! Good time show! Happy time, fun time, Steven! Woo! <laughs> Several months later, Steven is doing a lot better. He's keeping up with his friends, he's finally seeing a therapist, Steven X Therapy confirmed, and he's decided it's time for him to move out. He goes around town, says his goodbyes, drives away, and with that, Steven Universe is officially over. And wow, what a freaking journey this show has been. I don't think I've ever seen a show grow, change, and defy expectations as much as Steven Universe. And the way they managed to totally flip the show on its head in this last season was absolutely incredible. Like, for real, anyone who worked on this series should feel so proud of what they created. Steven Universe is over, but it's never gonna be forgotten. Mainly because I'm going to have nightmares about buff murder Steven for the rest of my freaking life. Jesus Christ! <laughs>